Hi, I'm Chin Liu. And I'm Sal, and this is our next make. We're in the shop today for a very important project. That's right. We're going to give our table saw some much needed upgrades. And we're going to start with the throw plate because this one has no safety features. And then we're moving on to the outfit table, which I really appreciate since we always use a roller stand and sometimes I'm the human outfit table. So I like this upgrade now. That's right. And I think if we design it properly, we can actually set ourselves up for dust collection down the line. So let's get started. I want to upgrade this throw plate with a zero clearance insert. This will make it much safer when cutting small or thin parts, but also give me an opportunity to install a splitter to compensate for the lack of a riving knife. I start by taking measurements with my calipers, and I use a square to ensure I'm getting accurate numbers. I also make sure to measure each of the touch points so I can find the smallest value. The key here is to make sure our insert does not protrude above the table surface, so we'll aim for the smallest number. Now I can look through the materials I have in the shop to find the most suitable piece. Again, I'll choose a board that's as close to my smallest value without going over. With the best board identified, I can now trace the throw plate as many times as I'd like. Here I'm making two, one for my regular kerf blade and one for my thin kerf blade. Before you start any project, please take the time to understand how to safely use your tools and be sure to protect yourself from injury. Keep your loose clothing and long hair away from your power tools. When appropriate, wear hearing protection or a dust mask. And most importantly, always wear safety glasses. I quickly cut the board into a more manageable length at the miter saw and then head to the bandsaw to remove the bulk of the waste. I make sure to stay clear of the lines because I'm going to use a router and a flush trim bit to perfectly match the size of the metal throat plate. I'll drill a quick hole at the drill press so I have some way of removing the insert when I need to and then I'll test the fit. You can see that the blade prevents the insert from fully seating, so we have to make a recess on the underside. I'll take a series of measurements to locate the position of the recess. To get the distance from the side of the opening, I use my tape measure, but I turn to a scrap piece of wood to determine where the leading and trailing edges of the blade are located. When I transfer the marks to the board, I add a small offset to ensure our recess is slightly oversized. Now, with a straight edge clamped to the workpiece, I use my router to cut a groove. At this point, the insert fits perfectly so we can turn on the saw and slowly raise the blade until it cuts through the desired amount. I'm using the table saw fence and a push stick to hold down the insert while I raise the blade. Now I can work on attaching the splitter. I'm going to use this product from Microjig. It seems quite promising and the instructions are really easy to follow. It comes with a simple jig so you can perfectly align the splitter holes with the blade curve. Now let's put this to use as we build the outfeed table. Okay, now that the insert is complete, we can turn our attention to the outfeed table. But first, we have to take some critical dimensions. The motor on my table saw hangs out of the back and swings way out to the side when the blade is tilted to 45 degrees. I'll take some measurements and then use SOLIDWORKS to roughly model the saw as well as a transparent keep out zone for the motor's range of motion. Now I can design the outfeed table to fit. This cantilever design with an offset on one side will encase the motor and support a large table surface. The red base will be made mostly of half inch plywood and get bolted to the steel table saw cabinet. The table surface itself will consist of three layers wrapped with maple edging. Let's get started working on the base by breaking down half a sheet of plywood. I'm doing a quick bit of layout and using my circular saw and jigsaw to remove an oversized piece that I'll turn into the large side piece of the base. Then I can head over to the table saw to cut all of the other pieces. Most of the pieces are simple rectangles, so they can be ripped pretty easily. But when it comes time to cut the large side piece, I make two different passes from either direction and then finish up the shoulder cut with my jigsaw. Now with both of the side pieces clamped together, I can make the contoured cuts. The last thing I do is cut the spacer and gusset that I need for the offset side. I just rip a 2x6 down to size and then cut the pieces at the miter saw. Now I can start thinking about assembly. I'm using pocket screws to hold everything together and taking a moment to sand all of the pieces now as it will be much more difficult after they're assembled. The pocket screws make everything go together quickly, but I do have to take a pause and glue up the offset side. This is made up of two smaller plywood pieces that sandwich together the 2x6 that we ripped to size. I just add glue, clamp things together, and then pre-drill and drive in screws. They not only strengthen the joint, but also act as a clamp so we can keep moving with the assembly. A few more pocket screws hold the offset side in place, and then I can glue in the gusset that will provide even more strength and hold the parts 90 degrees to one another. Now we can test fit and start drilling the mounting holes. I start by drilling 16th inch pilot holes and then drill 3 8 inch bolt holes in the base. I make sure to clamp a scrap piece of wood to the bottom face to prevent blowout when I drill the holes. 
Meanwhile, Chin Lu uses a stepped drill bit to work her way up to 3 8 inch holes in the table saw cabinet. Together, we attach the base of the cabinet using bolts, washers, and lock nuts. Now, let's take a look at the tabletop. It's built up of two layers of plywood, a top layer of coated hardboard, and maple edge trim. The construction is fairly straightforward, but there are a few critical things to consider. The first is the opening that allows clearance for the motor. I printed out one-to-one -one scale paper templates, cut them out, and then used them to locate the opening. On the thicker piece of plywood, I made four symmetrical cutouts, just to reduce the weight a little bit. I simply drill a pilot hole at the drill press, and then take my time using my jigsaw to cut out the openings. I can then start to clamp the pieces in place to help me locate the corresponding opening in the top layer of plywood. I'm using another, larger paper template to lay out the shape. This will create a ledge upon which the insert will rest. Again, drilling a pilot hole and using the jigsaw completes this step. To make the edging for the tabletop, I salvaged some maple from an old table that I built. I cut a piece wide enough to yield all of the parts I'll need, and then ran it through the planer to remove the old finish and get it down to the thickness I needed. Back at the table saw, I ripped the pieces to width and then cut the miters. I made sure to take my time when laying out the miters. First, I established one corner and then worked my way around the perimeter. I would mark each piece and then take it to the table saw to creep up on that line to achieve a perfect fit. To glue up the tabletop, I clamped the edges in place to act as sort of a jig, and then I worked my way from one side to the other. Glue does most of the work here, but I did add a few brad nails to act as clamps. I shot them in at an angle to ensure that they didn't poke through the other side, and I paid close attention to not put any where I would later route for miter slots. With the plywood glued together, I could then glue the maple trim in place. I added clamps and then let it set up before giving the top a final sanding and then getting started on attaching the hardboard. I'm trying out a spray contact cement from Loctite. I haven't used this before and it seems to work well, but I did learn that the overspray from the webbing is a bit messy. So when I sprayed the large pieces, I took the time to mask off the maple edging and the coated side of the hardboard with blue painter's tape and paper. I used thin scraps of wood to keep the pieces separated while I aligned them and then removed the spacers starting at the middle and working my way outward. I applied firm pressure with a J roller to ensure a good bond and then turned my attention to the messy job of trimming the top board. I used a flush trim bit in my palm router to trim the outside and then made an opening large enough for my router bit using a drill and jigsaw so I could trim the inside opening. I upgraded to my plunge router to add a large chamfer to the outside perimeter, but I failed to remember to attach my dust collection, so I still made a mess. With the top plate nearly complete, I can place it on the base, adjust the height to be slightly lower than the table saw top, and then glue and screw the supports that will hold the outfeed table at the right height. Finally, with dust collection attached, I used my router to cut the miter gauge slots. This project is now ready for paint and finish. I chose a red paint to match the highlights of my jet table saw and added three coats of polyurethane to the maple, sanding with 320 grit sandpaper in between coats. So Chin Lu, what do you think? I think this all turned out great. I love how the outfit table has a maple trim and it complements the red chassis really well. And this insert is just going to be so safe for us to use. I agree. In fact, if this project inspired you to increase the functionality or the safety of one of your tools, please let us know in the comments. And until then, We'll see you on our next make. We're recording. Mommy Mumemo. We're here in the shop. It's a shop. And that's where we are. We're in the shop today to make blah. To make blah. Hi, everyone. I'm Chin Lu. Sorry. That's not what I normally say. It's not your thing. Everybody. Okay. <clears throat> Did you just warm your armpits? <laughs> and we're going to start with the throw plate. Stop. Okay. Don't poke. Because as you can see, it's no good. Upgrade our table saw with some upgrades. Oh my God. We're going to give this thing. You are going to receive a gift. Uh, I have a cashew in my key. <laughs> oh, that was so good! Shit!